so the uh, it was interesting because we have like a homeroom class where we're not like teaching anything specifically, but we need to cover a couple things. Well, on Fridays, there's not really a specific curriculum that they want us to go through. It's supposed to be kind of fun and lighthearted. And I start my classes with music. So I'll like go on YouTube and grab a, a Disney song or something. And, uh, and so as I'm taking attendance, there's music playing in the background. And one of my students said, we should do like a sing along with this. And I'm thinking that would be a perfect Friday event. So, um, so I was like, okay, we're going to do that. So I pull up some music and, and I'm like, okay, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to play the video on YouTube and it's got the lyrics there. You can all sing along. And while I'm saying this, I'm realizing they're probably not going to turn on their microphones. Like they're, I'm not going to be able to hear them. So at best, I'm going to see 30 little pictures of kids singing and, uh, and then I'll be singing along. They'll be able to hear me. They'll be able to hear the music playing and they'll probably be able to hear themselves, but it's not going to be very gratifying for me because I'm not going to hear anything but my own voice. So so I get it all set up and I press play and I'm like, okay, let's sing. I don't know. It was like an Aladdin song. Right. And so, and I'm singing as long as it's not let it go. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm going wild, right? Like I'm really hamming it up and I'm dancing around and I'm singing and the kids, it was like, it was kind of magical because they're all sitting there really smiling and some of them are flat out laughing. Right. And I'm like, this is going really well. Right. Like I'm, I've got these middle school kids really enjoying this. And, uh, but then I'm like, not a single one is singing. And so halfway through the song, well, they're, like, they're in high school, right? These are high school kids or junior. No, this, is, this is middle school. So these oh, are okay. all eighth graders. Right. And so halfway through the song, I'm like, not a single one singing. It's just me singing. They're enjoying whatever they're singing, but, but like I don't know the well, song well enough, and like there's there's a multiple problems happening. I'm not that good of a singer, and so halfway through the song, I turn it, I stopped it, and I said, "Guys, this was supposed to be fun. Some of you wanted to do this." I said, "Why aren't any of you singing along with me?" And one of the kids turns on his mic and says, Mr. Liggett, we can't hear the music. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just acapella. <laughs> so the whole time is just me totally hamming it up and singing. So, yeah. So uh, guard your heart above all else, you know? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> that, we I should have we done sh that for Good News Monday. Yeah, we should have done that for Amazing Monday for sure. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Yep. All, but, uh, and then when they were done, I said, Hey, at least you guys had fun. So, uh, there'll be something they'll be telling their grandkids about. Awesome. So what's the uh, theme for today? Uh, so it's trivia Tuesday, right? So, uh, so what we're going to be doing at the end of the, uh, the broadcast, we are going to tell you the answer to the following. Number one, who is the oldest good racer on the show? Number two, who went to Penn State for college? And last, who is building their own go-kart? So it could be Dave, Jordan, or me, Steve. So uh, and we'll, the answers to that will be at the end of the show. Brilliant. All right. So... Yesterday, we read Romans 1, 1 through 7, and we got an introduction to who Paul was. We talked about um, who he's speaking to, and we're going to continue on in the first chapter of Romans in verse 8. Again, this is Paul talking. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you, because your faith is proclaimed in all the world. For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I mention you, always in my prayers, asking that somehow, by God's will, I may now at last succeed in coming to you. 
For I long to see you that I may impart to you some spiritual gift to strengthen you. That is, that we may be mutually encouraged by each other's faith, both yours and mine. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers, that I have often intended to come to you, but thus far have been prevented, in order that I may reap some harvest among you as well as the rest of the Gentiles. I am under obligation both to Greeks and to barbarians, both to the wise and to the foolish, so I am eager to preach the gospel to you also who are in Rome. Romans 1, 8 through 15. <clears throat> Great. Some of the way those verses are broken up by verse, like we've put numbers on it, and it makes it difficult to read. Um, like some of his... like. The way I read that was confusing. In verse 13, it says, I do not want you to be unaware, brothers, that I have often intended to come to you in order that I may reap some harvest among you as well as among the rest of the Gentiles. But there's the, the brackets, like, but, by the way, I've been prevented. So then it's really hard to read that in a way that um, uh, sounds right, because I got confused in the middle of it. I don't know if you guys did. But did anything jump out at you guys at this after reading it? I think it's really interesting that he says that uh, that we may mutually be encouraged by each other's faith, both yours and mine. I think that's a really interesting idea of like, that's why he's looking forward to going and see the Roman uh, Christian church is that he wants to, he wants to see their faith and be encouraged by their faith. And he wants them to be encouraged by his faith. And I, I'm curious what that would look like today. Um, and I think I've experienced it, but uh, what do you guys think? I think someone should do a podcast about it <laughs> and how to mutually uh, encourage each other. I think someone should really invest the time to, to do a podcast. I agree. For Some sort of a location where you could go regularly, let's say five days a week or so. As where, an you could, where you could join other Christians and sort of, I don't know what kind of a metaphor I could use to be like together going in the same direction, but you know, trying to with win. Real, yeah, trying to win. Yeah, <laughs> well, it'll, it'll come to us. We'll, we'll think, we'll <laughs> we'll think some, at some point. Yeah, but we'll I think it is very out. encouraging because it's not, especially during quarantine, right? I mean, it's really difficult to connect with um, your mm-hmm. fellow Christians. So, um. <clears throat> it's also hard for me to commit to waking up and doing a devotion in the morning, even though I should, um, unless I've got somebody encouraging me and there's some sort of, you know, just doing it on my own is sometimes easy to just let it go. And if I've got some people there that are doing it as well, well, now I've got that extra motivation because there's, it's, it's more fun and there, it just seems more fruitful to me to, you know, get some ideas off of. Mm -hmm. Um, But, you know, from what I can tell from other things I've read from Paul in the Bible, he's usually, excuse me, he's usually like kind of, I don't want to say critical, but he's judging, he's writing as the authority saying, okay, this is my letter to you, the church in this city. Here's the things you're doing good. Here's the things you're doing bad. And with this introduction to Romans, he's almost complimenting them. Like, hey, I can't wait to see you guys. Um, I think I've got some things to offer, but also I know you have some things to offer me. Like, I really want to go hang out because it will be a mutually beneficial um, time that we would have together, if only I could be there, because of who you are and the nature of your faith. Is there anywhere else that Paul kind of has that kind of, you know, almost puts himself uh, to me on equal footing verbally, uh, like we're, we're the same. Timothy comes to mind that he's sort of building Timothy up. Uh, So Timothy's sort of a peer to uh, Paul a bit, although Timothy being the younger brother. Yeah. um, But, But he's building him up in a way that, it sounds similar to Romans. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, um, I just what thought else? that was interesting. So, 
let's see here. There was, uh, it said that I'm under an obligation to both the Greeks and to barbarians, which, you know, that's always nice. I, I'm sure the barbarians really appreciated the call out, um, and both to the wise and to the foolish. Um, so the question is like, is there somewhere in between the, the, you know, the Greeks and the barbarians or was that like everyone? Well, I, what, that was actually what I meant. I, I lost my train of thought on a second ago, but I wanted to, I thought of that too, because to me, when I read that, what I hear is, uh, inside baseball, right. Or the behind the, it's behind the curtains. Okay. It's like when, when, um, you know, when you're preparing to go on stage and you're talking real frank with the people who you're going to go on stage with, you know, so when you're reading this, he's saying, oh, look, you know, I've got obligations to the Greeks and to those barbarians, to the wise and the foolish, like the smart people and dumb people. But if you're talking to someone like that, you know, that's, you know, that's your peer, right? Like you're they're they're sort of not in either camp in your mind. You're explaining to whoever you're talking to that both of those are like, yeah. I don't know. Does that make sense it's, to you? It like, seems how you, like it's a spectrum, right? The, the, I'm just showing you both extremes, right? And so then, it's everyone. Yeah, it's like min and max, highest, lowest. Like this is the extent of my reach. So that way you just assume that that middle section is, right. is you. Well, the audience, whoever's reading this knows who the barbarians are. So yeah. you said, I'm sure the barbarians appreciate that. It's like, well, he's not talking to them. He's yeah. talking to his friends. Like, it's you like, know me. It's like being the sinner and being like, yeah, that's not, that's not me that he's yeah, talking yeah. about and realize, oh, maybe I need to reconsider. <laughs> Have you ever noticed that like, no matter where you are in the country, there's another state or another part of the state or maybe two states over that's considered like you know, the not great state, like in Michigan, we look down on Ohio, right? Like Ohio is like, why would anyone live in Ohio? Right. And, uh, like does California have something like that? The other 49. Yeah. States. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone else. Texas, Texas does that. The other Texas, 40 Texas looks down on the other four and Texas, Texans are more proud of being Texan than they are American yeah. straight up. I mean, that's their, um, they always say that they can secede at any time because they didn't, they signed some different clause when they joined the union that gives them not as committed or something. But also too, it's like, I think Californians are kind of like uh, bandwagon people in some ways. Cause like a lot of people that are not from California moved to California away from the state that they were at. So that's why there's so much <laughs> dissing on the other 49 states. Cause you actively left to go to California. Well, California is hard to get to. Um, there is mountains in the way. And even though we can fly, I mean, to try and move, it's a long way. And it seems like there's a certain personality type that will make the trek that grows up somewhere and says, no, I want to go to the West Coast. I want to go and seek my fortune. And uh, so, yeah, no one, very few people were born here. It really attracts the people who come. And then now people are leaving. <laughs> yeah, when People they get enough money, the taxes are too much, so they leave. Right. So you come here to become successful and then leave to keep what you made. <laughs> I don't know if that's a real template. But anyway, back to the uh back to the scripture. Um I thought it was great. Um verse 15. So I'm eager to preach the gospel to you also who are in Rome. Um, is anyone in your life, like, uh, for me, I've got you guys, but how critical is it that you have somebody that's in, that is expecting you to, um, to continue to be consistent with your walk and continue to run? Like Paul's reaching out to these people and he's writing a letter and fully expects that he's talking to his peers and he can't wait to meet them and he can't wait to see where they're at so they can collaborate. Right? Yeah. For me, it's, it's, um, it's very important that I have that community and those brothers that would be very disappointed if I were to just completely 
you know, even if I move to a different state, then adopt a totally different lifestyle, right? Yeah, I think um, when I think of um, the mutually encouraged aspect of it, I, I think of accountability. I mean, for me personally, moving out here was probably one of the best parts about my faith uh, being enhanced because I was with a fellow group of Christians who encouraged me and was like, hey, I mean, your problems aren't that different from my problems. We could work on it together, which is always um, a good thing to, for one, know that you, someone can empathize with you, but then two, hold you accountable because they might be able to do it a little bit better than you in some aspect or another. Wow, you don't hear that story too often. I moved to California to find my faith. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, Steve, any, do you have any thoughts on that? How? Um... Well, I think it's key that it's like the most important part of Christianity that we are that we are having community with uh, other believers, and you know they tell you know the idea of a church. It's not the building, right? Like it's the community within the building or not, you know, uh, but it's the community that's developing relationships. It's iron sharpening iron, right? Like we as Christians are supposed to help each other. And what I thought was interesting in, uh, in verse 12 was that when it says we are mutually, mutually encouraging each other by our faith, it's not saying mutually encouraging each other that we pray more often or mutually encouraging us because we're reading the Bible more often. It's the faith. It's like it's we are putting our faith in God. We are going out on faith. We are going to uh, we're going to trust that God's going to take care of us, even though what we're doing is kind of scary in some ways. And in their time, it was really scary. You know, you were you had people like Paul that were potentially going to come after you and potentially kill you for your faith. So um, I think it's important to uh, that we have community, people that help us move forward in our faith and trusting God and living in a way that is honoring to God. Uh, and, and I think reading the Bible and praying is just something that comes out of that, right? Well, I think that's our motivation for doing this show. And the, I think the takeaway here is for myself and for anybody listening, and that is to find a community. We want to be a part of it where you can join us, and you're more than welcome to join us every day for our daily devotion. But also make sure you've got you know someone in your life that, that uh, can encourage you so that it, it's easy to lose track. I spent a lot of years where I was actually going, wandering further and further away. And it was never really a moment of a crisis where I just said, all right, I don't believe in God anymore. But what happened was after living in California for five years, Steve and I started talking and I noticed, oh, Steve is exactly the same place or similar to where I left him. <laughs> and now I'm listening. It's like I can hear myself and I realize, wow. My, I used to agree with him a lot more and now I'm disagreeing. Why is that? It's because I've changed. And so I see the, I see the need. And so I, that's how, I, that's what I would encourage uh, you to do is find somebody who can kind of be that plumb line so that you don't start drifting and not even notice. Well, thank you for that. <clears throat> and uh, what was the answer to those questions that you put? Yeah. So, um, all right. So the first question was, uh, who is the oldest? And that honor goes to m me. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm the oldest and, uh, but I, you're not, you're not that much the oldest. You're a little bit older than me and so we are, are both a lot older than Jordan. Yeah. How old are you, Dave? I'm 39 for another, 39. for another 30 days. And or Jordan, so. how old are you? 25. 25. Yeah. All right. And I am 41. 41. 41. So. All right. So. What's the All next right. One? And the next one is uh, 
Who went to Penn State? All right. Who is that? That, that is, is me. Our, our little Jordan. Uh, our little Jordan. Yep. And that's when I uh, left beautiful old Pennsylvania to come out to California. So, so, so the question I had for you earlier, but I couldn't ask it because I didn't want to ruin the, uh, the trivia, was people in Pennsylvania, who, which state do you look down on? Ohio as well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, being from Penn State, you don't like the Buckeyes. That's just a natural thing. We also don't like uh, the Wolverines mm -hmm. of uh, Michigan either all that much, uh, but we definitely don't. Hate is a strong so word, but we come close to that with Ohio. Okay. All right. And who is building his own go-kart? So must that be me. leaves only. Yeah, it must be Dave. <laughs> no, it turns out that's also me. Yeah, I'm we old man. We tricked you. <laughs> we tricked you. But thank you for posting your answers. Um, why are you building a go-kart? So my son, uh, Stevie, and I, we went, uh, last summer, we went to a, a place that has go-karts. And I'm looking at the pricing. And it's like you get to go around the cart track three times mm -hmm. for $15. And I thought to myself, I would rather own my own go-kart. So we, last year we bought a go kart, uh, and we rode it around a little bit. But uh, this year we're we're souping it up. We're gonna make it really, awesome. really something special. So hopefully we'll wow. post some pictures. Soon. Stevie's got a good dad. That is that is pretty great. And uh, is it just Stevie's, or can his sisters also ride it? Well, the sisters, so the girls will be able to ride it, but right now it's built in a way that you kind of have to be a little taller to ride it. So Stevie is just now getting to the point where he's tall enough to actually press the pedals. So, um, yeah, as the girls get older, they'll be able to ride it. You built that so that you can ride it. Yeah, except that it has the seat that, like, is tiny and, like... Oh. I thought that's so, why you put the pedals so far. So it's like, now dad needs the pedals well, down here. So you got to grow into it, kids. Only Gumby can fit in that. We <laughs> Slender get waist, long legs. Right. What are we called again? The Good Ratio. Nice. <laughs>